Good morning. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. <clears throat> Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Members of Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, welcome you on this, the sixth Sunday after Trinity. Our order of worship is Divine Service Setting 4, beginning on page 203 in the Lutheran Service Book. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, the 20th chapter. God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, 
visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. The Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. In them he has set a scent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. <clears throat> the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The just decrees of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle text is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the sixth chapter. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. The life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. If anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Back in the 1970s, there was a popular show on television called Happy Days. One of the main characters, who was supposed to be the coolest guy around, was named Fonzie. Perhaps you've seen the bronze statue of him down by the river downtown. He always wore a black leather jacket and he had jet black hair that was greased back into a ducktail. On the sitcom, he would occasionally approach a mirror while getting a comb out of his back pocket. And after looking to the mirror, he would shrug and smile his face and put the comb back in his pocket without ever doing anything with it. He looked in the mirror and saw what he believed to be perfection. Whenever he looked into the mirror, he came to the conclusion that nothing needed to be fixed or changed. In the first chapter of the epistle from James, which our prayer or collect of the day alludes to, the law of God is referred to as a mirror. Luther was therefore echoing the apostolic word when he spoke of the law as a mirror. Jesus, in our gospel text today, also shows us that the primary function of the law is not merely a guide to show us what is right and wrong. The law's primary function is to show us our sin, to be a mirror in which we can see our imperfections, our failures to fulfill the law, and our subsequent dire need for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear friends in Christ, to look into the mirror of the law and come to the conclusion that nothing needs to be fixed or changed, well, that's not cool. Instead, it leads to a place that's very hot. When looking to the mirror of the law, don't be like Fonzie. Recognize the imperfections and repent. Turn from your sin and fix what is messed up. Has something or someone in your life suddenly become more important than your relationship with the Lord? Our first response would, of course, mean, oh, no, not me. But take a minute and truly consider how you are spending your time. That's often a good indicator of what your priorities really are. How much time are you devoting to prayer in your personal devotion life? Look into the mirror of the law and notice that your priorities are messed up. Are you worrying instead of trusting the Lord? Repent and believe in the gospel. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will eventually work out. Maybe not in this fallen world, but you know that God has a wonderful eternal future for you. Repent. Stop worrying. You can't add a single hour to your life by worrying, so cut it out. Repent from your sins against the first commandment. God is God, and you are not. Trust in him instead of your own efforts. He wants you to use your common sense and do what you need to do, but at the end of the day, we recognize that the whole world is in his hands, not ours. So We shouldn't worry about how it will all turn out. Trust in the Lord, like our reading says, who shows steadfast love to thousands of those who love him and keep those, those commandments. Have you been honoring your parents and others in authority? Have you treated them with respect? Have you made their vocation as parents or leaders difficult, or have you made it enjoyable? Scripture says, children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Scripture also indicates that once we grow up, adults are still supposed to honor our parents and make some return to them, for this is pleasing in the sight of God. God intends that we take time to properly honor and, and show love to our parents, not neglect them. Scripture also indicates that we should submit to other persons whom God has placed in authority over us. Instead of talking trash about our leaders, we are supposed to be honoring them. So as we look into the mirror of the law today, we see that we need to repent from the way that we have broken the fourth commandment. 
look into the mirror of the law and recognize that our lives are messed up. We are sinners, each and every one of us. Don't walk away from the mirror and forget what you have seen. Don't be like Fonzie and put the comb back in your pocket. Fix it. In other words, repent. Have you been hot-tempered or quick to get angry lately? Has someone been getting on your nerves? Read what Jesus says about that in our gospel text today. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. Jesus says to us that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Jesus correlates anger with murder in our hearts. It takes two to argue how easy it is to recognize the sins of others in our conflicts while overlooking our own demeanor or transgressions that give rise to or exacerbate the conflicts we find ourselves in. Someone mistreats or offends us and anger floods into our veins and suddenly we become a reflection of the one who is offending becoming just like him. Look into the mirror of the law and see what you have done. Look into the mirror and recognize your anger, your sins in the conflict. God desires that we be content. He wants us to be content with all of the many and varied blessings that he's given to us. Yet we covet. We are tempted not to be content with our material possessions and want more. We can also be tempted to want a better family, a a better wife or a better husband, better kids, better friends, a better boss. The, the list goes on and on. But God lavishes so many blessings upon us. He desires that we be grateful and content with what we have been given. Yet we are tempted to be malcontents. God has blessed us with many and varied blessings. And yet there is still so much that we are tempted to covet. God expects perfection and sinlessness, even in our thoughts. We see that in those last two commandments. So we look into the mirror of the law today in our readings, and we see our sin. Like an ultrasound or an MRI that shows what is messed up in our head and our hearts deep below the surface. And our psalm today speaks about the function of the law. It reads... The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. By them, your servant is warned. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. The law exposes our sin. We look into the mirror. Sin is sometimes obvious, but other times sin is hidden in our angry thoughts, our lustful thoughts, or our coveting thoughts. The law shows us our sin, and we repent. We don't go on sinning deliberately. Instead, we deliberately turn away from our sins and try to avoid sin. We rightly turn from our sins and amend our lives and walk in newness of life. But we also must recognize that in our sinful condition... We cannot fulfill the law perfectly on this side of heaven. That's the primary function of the law, to show our sinful condition. There are hidden faults, sins that we fail to discern in our weak and fallen state. The law shows us our sin, but our messed up lives are much worse than just messed up hair that can be fixed with a mirror and a pocket comb. Only Jesus can truly fix what is messed up in our hearts, in our minds, and in our lives. Jesus does have high expectations. He, he does expect us to look into the mirror of the law and turn from our sins. He did not come to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them. And fulfill them is exactly what he did. He is the Savior of the world who fulfilled the law perfectly on your behalf. Jesus is the one who was killed on the cross as a punishment for your sins. The wages of sin is death, so there had to be a death, a penalty paid for our transgressions. So Jesus, our Savior, lived a perfect life, fulfilling all the righteous demands of the law 
He laid down his life on our behalf in fulfillment of the promises that have been given to us in the prophets. Jesus did in his life, in his death, and in his resurrection, is given to you in your baptism. Remember your baptism. All of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. In God's eyes, it's like we have already been punished for breaking all of those commandments. In God's eyes, it's like we were hanging on the cross next to Jesus and then put in the tomb as punishment for our sins. We were therefore buried with him by baptism into death. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The mirror doesn't lie. It shows our imperfections. But neither does the gospel lie when it shows us our perfection in Christ Jesus. The last verse of our gospel reading today, an English translation fails to bring out the full meaning. The shall be or must be verb in the original Greek manuscripts is not an imperative, it's not a command, but it is a future tense verb. Jesus is saying much more than you got to be perfect. He does expect us to look in the mirror of the law and repent. We don't go on sinning, but we try to fix what we have seen in the mirror of the law. We do so knowing that there are still hidden faults this side of heaven. So we wholly rely on God's grace that came to us through Jesus Christ so that we would be saved. You remember our baptism. You, therefore, shall be perfect. You will be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect at the resurrection of all flesh. He's actually speaking of the future perfection that you will have at the resurrection. You shall be perfect. In Christ, you are perfected. Your sins or your imperfections have been washed away by the blood of Jesus at the cross. What Jesus has done, the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, is given to you in your baptism. The righteousness of Christ, the fulfilling of the law in God's eyes, is given to you in those baptismal waters. For as many of you who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Though you see your sin when you look in the mirror of the law, God sees perfection when he sees you, you who have put on Christ. It is only in Christ that you meet God's righteous expectations of the law. Because of you are in Christ, because you have been baptized into Christ, you shall be perfect. At the resurrection, you shall be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. You shall be perfect like the Lord Jesus is perfect, for he and the Father are one. For just as we have borne the image of Adam, the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of Jesus, the man of heaven. And this has already begun in your baptism, when you were raised to walk in newness of life, and when you put on Jesus. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work We'll bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise as we confess the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven.
beloved of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts before, the, therefore, to the God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. You this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism. You renounce the devil in all his works and all his ways. You believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit. You hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran church drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? We support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts that God has given you. Upon this, your confession of faith, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that the Lord our, has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing your people to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with hearts to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit they may continue steadfast in the one true faith and the fellowship of this congregation as together we wait the, when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. We continue with our prayers. Please rise. Gracious Lord, bless the work of missionaries as they carry the gospel to the ends of the earth. We ask your particular blessing upon Reverend James May and his work in Kenya, Reverend Tyler McMiller and his work in Italy, and Herman Strozier and his work in Eurasia. Bless also our mission work here in our neighborhood and in our school. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, have mercy on those who are ill or in need of healing, especially Julia and her family, Leah, Miriam, Dorothy, Tommy, John, Geraldine, Marie, William, Marlene, Kathleen, Kathy, Kurt, Janice, Vivian, Braden, Pam, Peter, Pamela, Dick, Karen, Bob, Jim, Jan, Jerry, John, Marge, and Willie. Also those who are in hospice, especially Dave. Bless them all with strength and faith in their times of need. Bless the work of medical professionals. They may serve as your instruments of healing. Lord, in your mercy. We ask you to bless and keep those serving in the military, both here and abroad, especially Joshua, Lance, Tristan, Adam, Riley, Brandon, Jordan, Catherine, and Matthew. We ask for your continued blessing on all emergency personnel that you would keep them safe and also bless their work so that we may all live in peace and quietness. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are homebound, especially Richard and Pamela, Geraldine, Patricia, Grace, and Alice. Give them comfort in the knowledge that they are not alone, but you will never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, bless our school and our efforts to prepare a new generation in the faith to serve you. Bless our teachers and their families as they enjoy rest and relaxation together over the summer and bless our preparations for the coming school year. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. O oh Lord, grant us good government. Have mercy on our brotherhood throughout the world who suffer persecution for the sake of Christ. Place people in authority who will grant religious freedom to worship you in truth. 
Help us to be good stewards of the freedoms that you have blessed us with and safeguard the freedom of Christians across the globe. Thwart the plans of those government leaders who overstep or misuse the authority that you have given them. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, grant Pastor Shim peace, discernment, and confidence in your gracious will as he considers the call to serve at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church here in Milwaukee. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord God, look with compassion upon all those who are suffering from hunger, homelessness, poverty, discrimination, reduced employment, or unemployment. Have mercy and take away their sufferings. Move us all to be your instruments of mercy and grace to those around us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, in baptism, you join your children to the death and resurrection of your Son. Bless the memory of all our loved ones who have departed in the faith, and comfort all who mourn with the knowledge that, being united with Christ in a death like his, you shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. All these things, and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the offering.
let us pray. Your thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Just a quick note, notice in our bulletin, the insert, uh, our class for the Learning the Lord's Prayer in ASL is next Sunday, starts at 8.30, and welcome you all to attend so we can pray alongside our deaf members. Our interpreter's taking off today, but he'll be back next week, and we look forward to that. Uh, so uh, just like everyone who would like to do that, don't be intimidated, come, you, it takes a while, but you can get a download of the 
of a video of it too, so you'll be able to practice at home if you like. So at this time, uh, I'd like everyone to look around. If you don't know someone, this is a great time to introduce yourself. Shine side up. <laughs> yeah. uh, last Thursday. He's doing good. I will. 